Welcome to another short video post. This is my video production here still at the beginnings. I'm still working on uh, increasing the quality. The first videos I shot on an iPhone and later I got some dedicated cameras like the Sony Alpha 5100 or something and the Panasonic Lumix G7. Audio quality was uh, a problem from the very beginning. In the beginning for the iPhone I got this Rode Smart Nav microphone. And later for the Panasonic I got this real SLR camera microphone. However, it's not the best fit for indoor filming here on a desk. So today I will quickly solder an adapter for connecting smartphone microphones to the SLR input. It's actually both 3.5mm TRS connectors. However, obviously the um, iPhone has here ground on the third ring and microphone on the fourth ring instead of the more common whole case ground. First we need a 4-pin adapter here that we can solder to. Remember to get a 4-pin, the standard ones have only 3 pins. So on the iPhone it's left, right, ground, microphone and some other vendors are using microphone on the 3rd and ground on the 4th, which I personally find a little bit more logical. Maybe there is some good reason why they had to go the other way around. Maybe with grounding or compatibility with some old stuff. Um, however, it's also a little bit annoying that uh, there are different flavors out there. And uh, here I have some cable from some other project left over that is enough for the adapter. Soldering iron, obviously. <coughs> we could also Google the pin out of the microphone connector, however, we will quickly measure it just to show you how to measure something. For example, resistance. Let's see how this is wired up 1.6 kilo ohm, 1.6 kilo ohm, and uh, this is probably mono. So the left and right channel apparently connected on this uh, microphone. By the way, while the Panasonic Lumix is recording and you plug in a microphone, it's not switching to the microphone, you apparently have to stop the recording each time. And uh, by the way, it's always a good idea to plug this over immediately, otherwise you will probably forget it at the end. Theoretically, this is a little bit reversed as the iPhone is using the microphone for the outer pin. Um, you can actually shortly measure this too. 9 kilo ohm, that's certainly the microphone. So this ground thing is not going to any of the coils of the drivers for the left and right channel. Um, so the common ground here is this third pin, which apparently is on the right side here. It's always a good idea to double check by measuring, especially if you don't use these so often. So we found these two pins. So do I solder? It doesn't actually matter so much. As the camera might have stereo inputs, to have a signal on both inputs, uh, we want to solder both left and right channel of the microphone input. Don't <clears throat> you should always be careful not to heat these connectors too much. If you heat them too much, the plastic will melt and then your contact pins will not be aligned anymore. So only heat them as much as you have to, but otherwise you will destroy the connector. Actually, I will twist them already together a little bit and then it may be easier to solder them. Although this is not um, for a headphone, this would not be the ideal connection because um, actually Apple made it so slightly stupid that the ground is here the middle ring pin. I will anyway solder the ground here to the microphone mapping, although this will reverse the phase, but this doesn't really matter for a mono microphone. Hmm. 
Not the best, but uh, this this four pins it's quite small. Did not want it to overheat the plastic too much. Maybe we first try it out and then <coughs> I press the cable protection thing together. By the way, while we are at it, I should. I mean, so this is a smartphone microphone and this fragile wire thing here already broke because I always carried it in my bag. It's also really a little bit stupidly constructed, I have to say. See the silver thing there? I soldered this already. So this is actual Rode Smart Love microphone. Okay, it doesn't really know not hold so well. The problem with soldering things like this is that it dissipates so much heat, so still not heated enough that it's really soldered. Um, I suggest if you want to solder this, you put there something in between because otherwise the metal is pressing on the plastic. Um, come on. Okay, now it's a huge blob of tin, but this is what it is. So now it's a very huge piece of tin, but um, I hope at least it lasts longer. Companies could really design their shit so that it doesn't break immediately. So pro tip, pro tip, um, do not put this in your laptop bag between all the other stuff. This is this, this is that. So now we're going to test the mic. Let's see how this is because uh, audio quality when I speak on the desk is certainly much better with a smartphone microphone thing than uh, with this slightly far away camera microphone. Okay, that's a little bit of a fail, unfortunately. While it works in principle, the signal level appears to be way lower, so the camera doesn't really like it so much. It turns out this lavalier mix may need some uh, 3.5 to 5 volt plug power, and maybe it needs to be polarized, right? Remember when I earlier said I simply wire this this cable ground to the actual ground from um, from the plug here. Actually, maybe it maybe that matters. Because just for the test, I soldered it there and um, it actually worked. So unfortunately, we need to solder it here. If you you could actually wire this uh, ground on the other plug also the other way around. However, as I reused this old pre-wired cable that I can't change on this, so I really need to solder the actual ground to the ring pin and the signal down to the otherwise previous times uh, ground shield. Oh yeah, let's do that again. So let's give it another try. I just reversed the polarity of this and uh, let's hope that works now. So that actually worked. I hope the audio is much better and um, and if you don't want to solder this yourself you can even buy this pre-configured adapters even from companies like Rode for some 10 bucks or so. But I think it's always interesting to know how this thing works internally and also what voltages flow there. I did not even realize there is a 3.525 volt plug-in power or BIOS power um, in contrast to this real 48 or so volts of phantom power of professional mixing gear. So I hope you learned something and to see you soon and don't forget to subscribe for even more videos to come.